What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to tell you guys some tips, tricks, and ideas for making money at home in 2021 with service-based businesses. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So depending on what side you look at it, 2020 definitely forced slash encouraged people to actually take a look at their life, especially when it came to their finances, their jobs, and the things that they were given attention to as far as their career goes. I personally think 2020 was a liberating year for a lot of people because it kind of forced people to do things outside of the norm and instead of relying on regular jobs or comfortable jobs for money, happiness, and living. In my last video, I shared tips and tricks to start a business and ways to get your mind going to start a business from home in 2021. And now this video is kind of dedicated to the people who don't necessarily want to start a business, but they have a service. They can provide a very pivotal service in the structure of having a business. So in today's video, I'm going to go over five different categories of freelancing from home. Starting out with graphic design. Graphic design from home can work for so many people that didn't necessarily go to school for graphic design. The different jobs under graphic design would be a mood board creator, a website designer, editing photos, art illustration, as well as packaging design. Mood board creators are great because if you're the type of person who doesn't like necessarily being in front of the camera or you're the type of person who knows how to um, curate feeds, has a really good eye for aesthetic, you can literally get paid on freelance websites to create mood boards or even to curate um, Instagram feeds and mood boards for certain brands. Some people have great mindsets when it comes to business, but they don't have an eye for creativity. So you can offer your services as somebody who's there to create an aesthetic for a brand. Giving you a brief example, if you go on Canva's website, and we're gonna go here to Canva. Um, let me screen record this. So if you go in and Canva, and you go to, for example, all your designs, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend a palette that I actually have for my brand, pretend I have a makeup brand. Now, the business slash client has given me a whole bunch of pictures, but she doesn't know what her branding's gonna be, she doesn't know what color she's gonna pick, she doesn't necessarily know what fonts or logos or things like that. So you can simply go on Canva, you can click the picture, and then you can click this top piece right here where it says background colors, and you can get the document colors that are in the picture. This is great because you can create the mood board and actually give them the color code. So say for example, they, they go and they try to get packaging made, or they go to try to get labels made, or branding made, you can literally curate a whole package for them based off of the pictures that they already give you, and your job is just to make it aesthetically pleasing. And then you have sites like Fiverr, where if I go on Fiverr right now, you can see that people are literally getting paid $150 to create a design, logo, and brand identity. This is something that might seem super simple based, based off of what I just did on Canva, but there's people who literally have polar opposites. For me, I'm the creative, I love doing stuff like this, but as far as structure, I need, for example, a virtual assistant while we'll talk about and the next part, somebody to help me structure the business, reply to emails, do the things that I don't like doing. Okay, so I'm gonna show y'all an example. So we're gonna just pretend like this makeup brand came to us and they wanted a mood board. They have no idea where to start or anything. So let's try to find like something that we can make a mood board based off of. I'm gonna need y'all to get in your millennial bag because you know all of us was MySpace coders and we had our profile pop in, top eight pop in, all of the graphics, you know, even though we definitely technically didn't go to school for this we're all coders at heart get into that inner child get into that 12 13 year old and let's make this happen so pretend that the brand is not color pop and they took a really nice picture of their palette so we obviously have a good foundation a great product but they just don't necessarily know how to brand it so we're gonna go to canva university aka uh, the cheat code for graphic design and we're going to take the photo that the brand actually gave us and upload it to Canva. And I'm going to show y'all a cheat code that's going to make things so much easier. 
so once you upload the picture that the brand already provided and gave to you you're gonna make it real big because we're gonna create a mood board and we are gonna get some coin for doing so you know some of us just have an eye for the color the art the aesthetic but we don't really want to do all the business stuff and this is the way to go about it and be able to get paid so this little button right here basically tells you all of the colors and this is important because one a lot of people don't even know that you can do this any picture that you put on canva you can click the little color box and basically get all of the colors that are pulled from the actual photo that you put in so now to create a mood board we're gonna do a whole bunch of circles bear with me why my virgo moon does its thing um you know we got to make sure it's nice now that we have all of our shapes out we're going to click the color box now when we do this we're going to choose the first color that comes up then we're going to choose the second and boom we already have a mood board but say they're also wanting fonts it's really simple you can type in let's type in california love as if this was their brand name and we wanted and they needed like a logo or they needed marketing for this palette so we're going to type in the brand name so that we can actually see what it looks like with different fonts so that the brand can choose different fonts as far as what they wanted to go for for their packaging for their branding for logos or whatever bear with me while i organize because obviously this wasn't planned but i wanted to show you guys a more detailed version of what i was talking about let's change the color of this so that you can actually see it and boom so there you have california love but we also want to give them the actual name of the font this is a free font from canva and some of the fonts that you that are on canva you have to pay for and some of the fonts for your logos you have to pay for too because some people can basically own the rights to a font so you have to make sure that you're doing all of your research on that this is moon time so i'm going to put it right under california love so they can see their brand name their pretend brand name in the font so they have different fonts to choose from so now we're going to basically duplicate that same thing and find a different font because of course brands want options so boom let's go through these and just try to find like another cursive font boom so this one's good jonathan looks pretty cute she looks really cute so we are going to just basically copy and paste boom and then type jonathan and put jonathan next to the jonathan font that's california love so that they know that if they like their brand name in this font then the font name is jonathan now let's do one more just for some diversity that's something a little bit more bold so let's look for another font now that i'm done resizing everything we see we have a nice color board we have fonts to choose from but this color board means nothing if we don't actually have color codes now why are color codes so important so color co codes are not only important because it makes everything cohesive but say for example this palette i wanted to get packaging that had the exact same color oftentimes uh, manufacturers will ask, will ask you what the color code is and sometimes people will just say orange or pink or purple when that's not a color code that's just the actual color if you want the exact shade of this click the actual color click little square and then you go right there and then boom there's the color code so you copy and paste that and then copy and paste it underneath it this gives brands options a lot of people don't know that you can do this for free some people know that you can do this for free they just don't have the patience or ability to use different softwares a lot of older brands don't have things like this you can literally make a whole branding and marketing kit for a brand doing this in a quick and easy way all of the pictures are already provided for you and all you have to do is basically put it together so for my girls for my girls who had their myspace popping and you want to get in your myspace bag let that inner child be creative and be able to to make a brand go from plain and simple to aesthetic the parents who told us myspace and being on the computer and pretend coding and making things real pretty and cute like this is a whole career and even if you aren't a professional or you did not go to school for this you can definitely do this as a side hustle or a main or even make this your main hustle so if you're in the phase of you don't know what to do 2021 you feel like you're down and out you're not you're, you can be creative you can exercise um, some of your creativity do, through freelancing and then there's sites like Fiverr as well as others that allow you to basically sell your packages on a site 
and you can basically showcase your work and what you can do. But you need a bit of help as far as the professionalism goes, as far as logos, trying to find fonts and things like that. There's another website that I love called Skillshare, which is an online learning community that has thousands of videos that you can learn from. And in this video, I chose to partner up with Skillshare to tell you a little bit more about their website. For example, Anna Kay is a brand designer and she has a class called Crafting Crafting and Brand Identity and Brand Strategy. You can watch her video and she's gonna take you down the steps as far as creating a mood board, her strategies, the way that she does it, ways that you can structure the mood board so that you can give it to a client and they're willing to pay $150 plus for your services. If you feel like you need help creating a logo, there's classes on here um, with steps, step by steps on creating a logo and a brand board and things like that. You can learn pretty much anything and everything on Skillshare because they have a, a wide range of classes to choose from. Another good thing about Skillshare is it's curated specifically for learning so there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow whenever your creativity takes over and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. The second category that I wanna go over as far as freelancing from home is basically like management. I'm gonna just say management. So there's something called virtual assistant which is something that I I love and that I need as far as being able to maintain a YouTube channel, two businesses, and a lifestyle. A virtual assistant is basically somebody who does anything business related that a business owner needs. So for example, I would go on a freelance website and look for a virtual assistant who would be able to reply to customer service emails, be able to reply to um, shipping, um, management, and things like that. As far as business goes, these are things that you think like, oh, I don't need to pay somebody to do it. But having somebody who's specifically geared towards answering emails, making sure that your customers are happy and satisfied, making sure certain things are ordered um, monthly depending on your volume that you have in a business are super important because there's people who are like me who don't necessarily like those type of analytics and There are people like me who don't necessarily do great with following up with emails and I'd rather be immersed in analytics as far as marketing and branding and photography and things like that. Another part of a management job is social media managing. So for example, once again, I'm basically dragging myself in this video in this particular segment because I do great with doing photo shoots for Praise Her doing fo or taking photos for myself, but sometimes I get lost in the day-to-day -day life that I'm not necessarily taking the time to actually post my things on social media. So if you're the type of person who likes scheduling, who likes structure, who likes stability, who can basically come in and organize somebody's life, somebody's business, there is a freelance job opportunity for you as far as social media management or virtual assisting. People will pay you to basically curate their feed, post things on time, reply to comments, and basically implement new ideas and strategies um, that would help them grow their social media platform. Okay, now the, this next freelance opportunity is for all of my writers. If you're the type of person who loves editing, um, editing essays, loves cover letters, things like that, there's also freelance opportunities for you. Skillshare also has videos on teaching you how to um, create cover letters, um, resumes, things like that. Sometimes people know how to be in front of people and, they like, and they're great with verbally communicating, but they're not necessarily great as far as putting things together and packaging it well. The second to last category is basically like my music category. If you are an artist and you're up and coming and you have your own music or you just like making beats and you produce beats or you do both. You can put your services on Fiverr or learn even how to create beats or, or audio intros for people like, um, people like me who are YouTubers and always need copyright free background music. You can make beats and put them on freelance websites and people will pay to use your beats in, their, in, their, in the back of their videos or whatever they choose to use those beats for. Another thing is if you're somebody who is a vocalist and a vocalist or has a wide range of the way that you can use your voice, people will also pay you to do voiceovers for their cartoons or even for their music intros and things like that. 
And shout out to all of the parents who have been doing their best as far as virtual learning goes with their kids. From my experience, for people who are parents and who have kids that are learning from home, there's definitely a need for online tutors. So if you're a person who has a great knowledge of certain subject format and you're patient and you can do online tutoring, there's a huge opportunity right now more than ever for online tutoring where you can literally be making $200 or $300 a day by a day by tutoring different kids all over the country. So that concludes today's video as far as making money from home in 2021 service-based businesses. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you guys liked some of the ideas that I gave you. Once again, do not be scared to go on Skillshare and try to learn something new. If you have a passion, but you don't necessarily have the skill to package it up and get paid for your work, you can go on Skillshare and learn how to basically make your hobbies into full-time or part-time jobs while freelancing at home. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next upload. Peace out.